I'm Ashlyn, and I am here to throw my mouth. I mean, you guys know that I like to talk, I have a lot of shit to say, and Twitter only lets me talk for like 2 minutes and 40 seconds before they cut me off, so I found a place where I can talk more. Um, we're gonna do this like Tuesday and Thursday for now. Maybe we do more eventually, maybe we do less eventually, maybe I don't have that much to fucking say. We'll see how it works out. Um, we're gonna talk sports, we're gonna talk music, we're gonna talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about, to be quite honest with you, honey bunny. Um, but today is probably going to be baseball heavy because we start the playoffs tomorrow. And I'm so excited. We have our wild card game starting tomorrow. We have the Red Sox and the Yankees at Fenway. Cole versus Eovaldi. Eovaldi. That should be fantastic. That's a good rivalry anyway. Those games are always good. I've been to a... Um, Yankees Red Sox game at Fenway in July for like a whole lot of nothing. Like nothing was riding on it and it was fucking bananas. So I can't imagine like both their seasons are riding on this. So that's going to be awesome. Gronksy is probably going to be like hopefully cleaned of all that champagne by now. Hopefully he's like chilling, relaxing, recovering from all the partying he's been doing. The Red Sox are ready to go. Um, they got that home field advantage at the last minute. I thought the game was going to be in the Bronx, but after game 162, the way everything fell, it's at Fenway. So the Red Sox have to be excited about that. I know I am. I cannot wait to watch that game tomorrow. But, but the game I'm really excited about is Wednesday, the Dodgers versus the Cardinals. The Dodgers won 106 games. They're fucking phenomenal. And if the Giants didn't like, I don't know, make some sort of deal with the devil or something. I'm really not sure what's happening over there. If they didn't do whatever it is that they did, then the Dodgers would have won the division easily. They didn't. Therefore, their entire season comes down to Wednesday. And they have to play the Cardinals, who do, in fact, have devil magic. Like, that's a fucking fact. We know that. They've had it for years. So, bless their hearts. The Dodgers just lost Muncie. And Kershaw, for what looks like, could be an extended period of time. I mean, we don't really know how long, but they said definitely won't be in the game on Wednesday. And I know I saw with Muncie that he probably wouldn't be in the DS. I haven't seen as much about Kershaw. Admittedly, I haven't really looked, so I might be wrong. Y'all will let me know. Um, That's going to be a really good game, though. The Cardinals won, like, 17 games in a row. Yeah, 17 games in a row, lost one, came back, and then won one right after it. They have been hot the entire month of September. Like I said, they have that double magic. Adam Wainwright is going to be pitching for them on Wednesday. He has been fucking phenomenal this entire year. He is 40 years old, y'all. He is fucking 40, and he is doing what he is doing, and it's insane. Um, on the other hand, though, Max Scherzer is going to be on the mound for the Dodgers, so... It's not like they're hurting. Um, there should be some fun things in that game. Because, like, now that Muncie's out, I don't know who's going to play first base. I mean, is it going to be Cody Bellinger? Technically, Pujols could play first base. I don't see that. That's not going to fucking happen. Like, come on. But, so, Cody hasn't played much first base this year. Cody hasn't played much baseball really at all this year, if you want to be honest. Not good baseball anyways. Plus his heart. But... They don't need him to be, like, 2019 MVP Cody Bellinger. They just need him to be decent. That's it. Like, they're that fucking deep with Trey Turner, with Mookie Betts. AJ Pollock's hitting, like, really well. That whole team's fucking... Justin Turner is, like, a ridiculously strong leprechaun who's really good at baseball. I don't understand how all this fucking team is as good as they are. But they're phenomenal. My head, my head and my piece of paper in front of me tells me that the Dodgers win on Wednesday. But the Cardinals have the ridiculous amount of luck, magic, fucking voodoo. I don't know what to call it. I don't know. I don't know because it kind of came out of fucking nowhere. But the Cardinals have whatever it is they have going. So anything can happen. I'm leaning Cardinals just because... It feels like they could do whatever they want right now. The Dodgers are better. The Dodgers are the better team. But I just feel like it's not going to happen. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I hate them. I can admit that I'm biased in that regard. Maybe it's because I hate them. But I fucking hate the Cardinals too. So I really don't know that that's it. 
I really don't know that that's it because I fucking hate both those teams to be honest. Like, go Meteor, actually, if you're really asking me. Let's go fucking Meteors. E runner on second rule is officially over for us. It will not be effective in the postseason. So, extra innings are just regular old extra innings like we're used to. That starts tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. Uh, runner on second isn't supposed to come back for 2022. The CBA is over. We will have all that those talks this off season. So maybe they try and pull that back in there somehow, but I don't think anybody wants that. So hopefully it's gone forever. Either way, it's definitely gone for this year because I know if the Braves would have lost a game in the postseason because that stupid fucking runner on second rule, I would have lost my mind. So I'm glad we don't even have to worry about that this year. And playoff baseball is here, baby. October baseball is here. Like, I'm so fucking excited. I'm so excited. It's going to be phenomenal. We're going to have a lot of fun. And the Braves are probably going to win the World Series. So, hope you're ready for that. Okay, we've covered Major League Baseball. Now on to college sports. Auburn played LSU this weekend and we won in Death Valley for the first time since 1999. So, for the first time since I was in, like, fifth grade, maybe? We won in Death Valley. It was night game, too. It was fucking amazing. I didn't get to watch much of the game because I was at a baseball game. But from the highlights I've seen, it was pretty exciting. Bo ran for his life a few times and was able to make something out of it. So that's cool. Um, Georgia put Arkansas in the fucking blocker. Like, bless them boys' hearts. They didn't have a chance. They fucking crammed that shit down their throat immediately. Fucking immediately. Alabama played Ole Miss and beat them. Of course, Ole Miss was good, but Alabama's Alabama. I will say Alabama is not the team. Like, that's, this is one of the worst teams that they've had in the last few years. But they're still really fucking good. So, whatever. But the rest of the SEC has kind of been meh for me. I mean... Auburn's 4-1. and one. We've lost to Penn State, but we had a terrible showing against Georgia State. So, what are we doing? Um, Florida lost to Kentucky. Kentucky's kind of good at football now. I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. But, anyways, Auburn plays Georgia this weekend. So... I'm just really thankful that I have playoff baseball to focus on because normally the Auburn-Georgia game is my birthday game um, because my birthday is November 15th. So normally it's that either the weekend before or after, usually the weekend after my birthday. And that's rough, y'all. That's hard to do for your whole damn life. Or, well, as long as I can remember, it's been on my birthday weekend. But this year, it's not. And I play off baseball to focus on because Georgia is so fucking good that it hurts. I mean, anything can happen. We could have another prayer in Jordan Hare. You never know. You never fucking know. But I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to it. But college football, anything can happen. Who knows? Maybe. It, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm trying to convince myself as much as I'm trying to convince you. In case you didn't notice that. But it's fine because by Friday I will have like convinced myself that somehow, some way, Auburn actually will beat Georgia and we will be phenomenal. So just hang on until then. Also, college basketball starts this month. That's really fucking exciting. Auburn has not announced yet if the arena is going to be full capacity, if we're going to have to have masks, any of that good stuff. I don't really care. I just hope they let us in because I need the jungle back in full force. I need it like I need air to breathe. I'm so excited for college basketball. I cannot wait. We also had fall ball start last week for the baseball teams. Um, the stuff I saw out of Auburn was actually really exciting. We had some good contact. Pitching was decent, but we had some really good bat contact. So hopefully that sticks around because our season last year was pretty disappointing. Um, there were a lot of games that we left on the table that we could have and should have won. Like, one-run losses fucking kill me, dude. Like, I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. 
and we had like 15 of them, I think, something like that. It was insane. So hopefully this year we are able to put some things together and be a little better. Hopefully. But either way, we're about to hit that prime time where we have college football and college basketball both going at the same time. And then college basketball will roll over and baseball will start and we'll have that wonderful overlap. And y'all will get to hear me scream War Damn Eagle for like the next nine, six months, six months, something like that. Now it'll take like a couple months break and then it'll be football season again, so... I'm really excited about that. And like I said, I am an Auburn fan. I am a Braves fan. So I am well versed in delusion. I will convince myself that my team is the best. I don't care if your team's actually better. They're worse. I don't care what you show me. They're worse. We're, we're the best. We're going to win. Period. So don't try to talk to me. All right, another fun thing that I want to do on here is get a little music talk in. I don't really get to talk about this. A lot in a lot of places. I am from a musical family. My dad was a drummer, um, is a drummer, was a drummer. My parents own an audiovisual sound company, so they install sound systems in churches and stadiums and schools and do concerts and rentals and all kinds of stuff. So I've been around music my entire life. Um, it's something that I'm really passionate about. I love live music. I love going to concerts. I, it's something I'm really passionate about. If I had to pick between sports and music, as far as going to live events, I would absolutely pick live concerts over live sports for the rest of my life because it's like an experience unlike any other. I cannot explain it. And not having concerts in 2020 because of COVID sucked, sucked so bad, especially somebody like me. I go to like 15 to 20 shows a year, so not being able to have that outlet sucks. Um, so I'm really excited concerts are coming back. I have a few that I'm lined up. To go to, um, I think the next one that I have planned is a New Year's Eve concert with Anderson East. He is like an indie Americana kind of vibe. Um, I don't know what he classifies himself as. Some people put him as country, but he's definitely not country music. He's got a sweet ass fucking horn section that plays with him. And they're just really good. Um, his guitarist is named Scotty and I'm obsessed with him he's fucking phenomenal to the point that when I saw them on New Year's Eve in 2019 um we were leaving the venue and I saw Scotty walk into the tour bus and I was like bro I have to have a picture I have to have a picture and flagged him down and made David take a picture with me and him and I uh, post it every year on his birthday because I'm a fucking psycho in case you didn't know um, anyways, so I'm really excited live music starting to come back, and my current obsession with music is a little something called 8D music. If you don't know what that is, pause this video, go look it up, because it's fucking cool. Um, it is a way, it's like a sound effect, I guess that's how it would be described, that they apply to music that changes the way you hear it, so it can jump from right ear to left ear, in front of you, behind you, over to the left, back to the right, like all over the place. And it kind of gives you like a virtual surround sound feel. Where the obsession came is, is I stumbled across an article that said neurotypicals do not like 8D music because it kind of drives them nuts because it's moving all around. And it's not a consistent sound. And it's not like delivered in a way that their brain is used to hearing music. So they hate it. Whereas people who do not think typically, whose brains do not work in the normal way, so people with ADD, ADHD, dyslexia even, autism, any kind of disorder or something that causes your brain to think a different way than and process information in a different way than most everybody else does, really likes 8D music because it kind of occupies different parts of their brain that they like, that don't get stimulation as much. So, like, for me, I don't know about y'all, but I listen to music when I'm working or a podcast when I'm working. Like, I have to have some sort of sound going on in my ears while I'm working. If I'm in a dead silent room, I can't get anything done because I get too distracted, which seems kind of counterintuitive, I guess, because you would think that if you get distracted easily, you would need less distractions around, but that's not really true. 
Because like I said, if it's dead quiet, silent, I, I can't do anything. I get distracted by a dot on the wall or a bug on the window or I click my pen or shake my foot or I, I can't get anything done. So I have to have something going on in the background at all times. And I found that if I listen to 8D music while I'm working, I'm more productive because I don't get as distracted by what's going on that I'm listening to. A podcast I can sometimes get too far into to where it pulls me away from my work too much. Um, regular music is great, fine, and wonderful too. But the addition of the 8D sound effect and the way the, it kind of just focuses me in on the project that I'm working on and allows me to kind of, I don't know, I work better, I work faster. There's absolutely no science behind this except me telling you that it's true, but just trust me, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I did go to um, Twitter because that's what scientists do and ask people to listen to 8D music and if they liked it to let me know if they were neurotypical or not. And so far, I mean, granted my sample size is only like 25 people, but so far, I haven't found a neurotypical person that likes AD music. They all say it's annoying. Or like they're kind of okay with it at first, but then it gets annoying because it's just too much movement and it's too much going on. So, go listen to AD music. Let me know what you think. You should love it. If you don't, that's fine. Maybe your brain works normally. Lucky you. I don't know what to tell you. I fucking love it. All right, so we've covered baseball. We've covered a little bit of college sports. And we've covered some music stuff that I really love. The last corner of this show, corner, quarter, I don't know, whatever we'll call them, we'll workshop it, see what happens, see what feels good, um, is going to just kind of be bullshit. It's going to be whatever I want to talk about, because let's face it, that's what this whole thing is, if we're being honest. But today, I wanted to go over kind of like what my favorite sports memorabilia item is that I have, and maybe I can get to learn what some of y'all's are. Um, after this gets posted, you can let me know. But I have not a ton of sports memorabilia stuff. I have this bat back there that's Max Free. That's kind of cool. I have a couple baseballs. I have a Charlie Blackman. I have um, like a handful, whatever. I have nothing like phenomenal or spectacular that would like knock your socks off. And actually my favorite sports memorabilia item is not from a famous person at all. Um, and yours might not be either. It might be the t-shirt you were winning when your college team won the national championship or whatever. I don't know. But I'm sure you have something that's special to you, so I want to show you something that's special to me. My Uncle Terry was a football referee and a baseball umpire. Um, he passed away in 2020 after a long battle with cancer. And when he passed away, my cousins, Stephanie and Tori, gave me some of his umpiring stuff. So I have like a shirt. I have his little pockets, um, I have the last score book that he had, I have a handful of things, but my favorite thing is the home plate brush, and it's normally up there on my shelf behind me, which y'all can never fucking see, because I thought I was taller than I really am, so I hung it way too high, anyways, whatever, we'll redo this back there one day, and you'll be able to see it, but that's my favorite item, because I know he used it all the time, it was with him all the time, and it just, it's nice to have something that he had. And I think he would be pretty fucking proud of what I've done since he's been gone. Um, so that is my favorite sports memorabilia item. I would love to learn what yours is. And that's kind of all I have for today. These first few might be kind of rough because guys, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But we're going to have fun with it. And we'll see what happens. We'll see how it works out. Um, until Thursday, I want you guys to be nice to yourself, be nice to each other, drink your water, and go be a bad bitch. Love you guys.